Hello there. In this video we're going to talk about two conceptual ideas known as levels of confidence and levels of statistical significance. This, math, this video is not very math heavy, uh, but it's useful to get a sort of idea of the upcoming things that we plan to do. Uh, so let's assume you have some population P and it has a mean mu standard deviation sigma and we gather some size sample from it and it's going to have some sample mean X bar and some standard deviation X, uh, S. Let's assume this is a size n sample. Uh, so what do we know? Let us assume we want to estimate the value of the population mean mu. Uh, so what do we know? So recall that the expected value of the random variable x bar is going to be equal to mu. So what does this mean? If this is true, then that means x bar is an unbiased estimator of the mean mu. So that means if we use this as an estimator and sort of guess around it, then that's going to give us some field of values uh, where we're going to be confident that the mu is going to be. Uh, so what are some conclusions that we might already be familiar with? So if n is large, then what do we know? If n is large, then x bar is a good, in quotes, approximation for mu. Hence, our level of confidence should be large for estimating mu and vice versa. That is, if we have a small size sample, uh, then we won't be as confident that x bar is going to be a good approximation for mu, even though it is an unbiased estimator. Um, so if our level of confidence should be large uh, for large n, so that means why not just choose a 100% confidence interval? Uh, so let's think about that for a minute. Uh, so let's assume this is our all our possible values of x bar. And we get a possible x bar value of, let's say, um, I don't know, uh, let's say 172.8 cm. So this is our x bar for a particular sample of heights, let's assume. Uh, and let us assume n is large. Let us assume n is equal to 1,279. So if we say that, okay, let's build some uh, area here, and let us assume there's a distribution associated with this x bar. So this is some distribution of x bar. We don't necessarily know it's normal unless we assume some other things, but it's going to have some distribution, right? All right, so what do we know? So we're going to be a certain level of confident uh, that the x bar value is going to be between uh, these two values. So this is going to be our level of confidence, C. And C is going to be a number between 0 and 1, uh, just like probability was. Um, because this corresponds to a percentage level. Uh, so why not make this percentage level uh, C arbitrarily large, like close to 100%? So why not be 100% confident? Uh, I'm pretty sure everyone has heard the uh, statements about being overconfident in something, right? Uh, so overconfident, what does that mean? So here's our x bar value that we have in our sample. 100% confident means we're going to cover everything here. So this is going to be c is equal to 1 or 100%. So if in this previous example, we were some level of confidence that it would be between, say, 175 and, say, 170. So this was our previous, what we will call a confidence interval. But what we're saying here is we're 100% confident uh, that the mean is going to be between minus infinity and infinity. Well, okay. Well, everybody's going to be 100% confident that the sample mean is going to be between minus infinity and infinity, regardless of the sample size. So if you even have your sample size of 2, then uh, I'm going to be 100% confident that 
the sample mean is going to be in between here. So keep that in mind. So 100% confidence level of confidence implies that x bar is somewhere in between minus infinity to infinity. Uh, and this is usually subscripted with the quote, of course it is. Anyone could tell you that regardless of n, regardless of the sample size. Uh, so what we usually say that this is 0% statistically significant. So that is one extreme. Uh, so what does it mean to have a 0% level of confidence? So 0% level of confidence is going to correspond to some region that has an area of 0. And the only type of interval for which it has an area of 0 is just a point. That is, we have this interval, but it has no width at all to it. So that means we're 0% confident that our interval x bar is going to be in between x bar minus 0 and x bar plus 0. That is, there's no margin of error uh, that we're claiming. So what we're pretty much also saying is we're 0% confident that x bar is exactly mu. Um, now, is that possible? Yes. Uh, but what is the likelihood that the sample mean is equal to the population mean? It's going to be really unlikely, but not necessarily impossible, right? Uh, but if that were the case, then that would be perfect. Uh, so that would be a 100% statistically significant statement. If you can prove it. Uh, so this is going to be a hard statement to prove, whereas this first one is an easy statement to prove. Uh, not necessarily easy, but overall trivial to prove, right? Anyone can prove a 0% a zero, zero statistically significant experience. Uh, so it is natural to define confidence and statistical significance as complements of one another. So we're going to define C to be equal to our level of confidence. And we're going to define alpha to be equal to our level of statistical significance. So if they are complements, then that means we have some equations that are associated with it. Uh, namely, alpha is going to be 1 minus c, c is going to be 1 minus alpha, and 1 plus or alpha plus c is equal to 1. So these three statements are going to be true. So if I were to say, okay, suppose my level of confidence is 95%. So if my level of confidence is 95%, that means my level of statistical significance is going to be equal to 0 0.05. And what does this mean in terms of our problem? So a level of confidence of 95% uh, let's assume that the shape is actually normal. Uh, that means we're going to be 95% confident that something that x that our mu is going to be somewhere uh, in here somewhere. Uh, of course, the larger your level of confidence, the less significant it is. Uh, so sometimes you may want to decrease your level of confidence. Uh, so suppose my level of confidence. is say 90%. If that is true, then that means C is going to be equal to 0 0.90, forcing my statistical significance to increase to 0 0.10.
So in terms of the picture, my region is gonna be just a tad smaller because this area is gonna be a little bit more smaller. So if what I'm pretty much saying is I'm 90% confident that mu is somewhere in here. So if you prove that this second statement is true, then that is a stronger statement than proving this first statement to be true uh, because you have a smaller, narrower interval in that. But there are some consequences and some things you should and should not do when you start to make these statements. But that's going to be pretty much uh, the next series of videos that we're going to discuss. Uh, when you can make these conclusions, let us assume that you prove you're 95% confident that mu is somewhere between these two numbers. Like, can you really say that mu is truly between these two numbers, even though you prove that thing to be true? And that's going to be another question that we will answer in a future video. But to answer this question, the answer is no. So just because you are 99.9999% confident that mu is in between, say, uh, negative 1,000, 10,000 to 10,000 doesn't mean mu is there. Because mu could be in the billions or trillions or even larger than that, even on the negative side. So just because you have a high level of confidence does not mean that you even will get it. But we'll discuss these consequences in the upcoming videos.